let's move on yeah. to the rugby. Also in the half halt on Saturday, Loftus uh, ground with a good record for the Springboks. And they seem to play some classic Springbok rugby, very attritional. Mornay Stain winning it with the boot, taking his opportunities. It did seem like a game of old mm -hmm. uh, to some extent. Um, but would you say Alistair Kutsia has got some of the combinations right, or was that more of a horses for courses team that he put out there? Yeah, as you say, Nick, very much a flashback to way back, that mm -hmm. performance from the, from the box. You know, the only thing that surprised me was I didn't think there were more than one or two rolling malls. You know, mm -hmm. you sort of um, um, think that's the way they would have gone. Mornay staying at flower off, rolling malls up front, and just, you know, grind down the opposition. But staying, starting with him, you know, hats off to him, kicked four penalties, two drop goals, counted for all the points. Not the mm -hmm. first time he's done that. I think it's actually the third time um, he, he's, he's done it in the Springbok jersey. <coughs> Great performance from um, starting for the first time, I think, in three or four years. Um, you know, he did everything that was asked of him, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, looking at Rudy Page, who was brought in at um, Scrum Off, mm -hmm. head of Fife, um, the clerk. Again, you know, he was fairly good at what he, what he was asked to do. Um, a concussion sort of ruled him out early in the second half, which is a bit unfortunate there. And then, and then at fullback, Patrick Lambie, obviously coming back from that concussion mm -hmm. that he suffered all the way back in June against Ireland at Newlands. You know, he looked a little bit hesitant I in the beginning, very much just, you know, positional play was good, kicked everything, didn't try and take contact at all, but, you know, came through with flying colours. I'd be very surprised now if, if um, Alistair Kutsia makes any changes for the next test. He did sort of say when he picked this team that it was the rugby that they sort of wanted to play now. Mm -hmm. He very much was under pressure. They, they needed a victory of any sort. It didn't matter how ugly it was. And it was pretty ugly, to be honest. You know, 10 out of 10 for a defensive effort. 0 out of 10, I think, for attack. <laughs> you know, very boring rugby to watch. I, I can't remember a spring of performance where I don't think we were even in there 22 at any mm -hmm. stage. Certainly in the second half. I think until we scored those two, or the, the, the late um, drop goal and penalty, the 12-10 um, scoreline, I didn't think it was going to change the entire mm. second half. Australia missed a couple of long-range penalties by Reese Hodge. You know, any of those had gone over. Yeah. Could have been a different ball game. You know, Alistair Kassir spoke afterwards, I've been happy with the performance, happy with the defence, and he, he saw signs on attack that we were improving. You know, it's very much a different backline attack. You know, three players changed from the, the, week, the week before, or the fortnight before. So I'm not too sure what, what he sort of saw that was better. Um, you know, th this team would lose to the All Blacks if they played the same way. You know, the All Blacks, yeah. again, <coughs> they will score tries no matter how good the South African defence is. And I just can't see how South Africa could go from not coming close to scoring against that mm -hmm. Australian team to suddenly scoring a couple of tries against um, the All Blacks. And you're going to need to score those five, seven pointers yeah. to keep up with the All Blacks because they are going to score no matter how well they, you know, the, the box are defending. And, and obviously down at the coast in Durban, no altitude factor to worry about for the All Blacks. They came off a great victory against um, um, Argentina. In Argentina, that match, if you contrast the two, was played at 100 miles an hour. They literally mm. did not stop. Yeah. Um, Argentina, I thought, were actually very, very good. They, they won the second half 14-7. And apart from sort of I 10 minutes... I stopped watching at half time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, quite it, impressive it, it, that it, they... It was, it was close until the last sort of 10 minutes of the first half mm. where New Zealand suddenly just strung together three or four tries in, mm. in 10 minutes. You know, playing sublime rugby that the poor Argentinians looked a little bit out on their feet and that's what New Zealand will do to you. They talked about f starting fast and that's exactly what they did. They played healthy skelter rugby mm. but with amazing accuracy yeah. and scored the points and, you know, picked up the bonus point again. You know, they're, they're perfect on their five from five and in bonus points and victories so you know they really really are um, flying high and they're now one match closer to the world record of 17 victories so you know all, it might be down to the box to sort of stop them if they're going to if anyone's going to stop them but I just can't see how that team in, in seven days with a couple of injuries that, mm. that have to be monitored as well this week you know comes back and, and, and wins in Durban next weekend. Mm. Rob with the All Blacks having already won the tournament and um, you know this game I guess being called a dead rubber by many if the box do manage to beat the All Blacks, how much novelty can we take out of that? And also just what Garen touched on in terms of um, not having a sort of expansive game plan. I mean, can we just give up on that uh, entirely? Uh, we know <laughs> Alistair Kutsia traditionally is quite more conservative in the way, the way he coached the Stormers. Yeah, um, if we do win, and of course that, that really is a, a big if, um, 
then it'll be interesting to see how the box actually go about it. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to try to sort of uh, grind them down to be industrial? My, my suspicion is that the box will retreat even <coughs> further into the Largo uh, this weekend and perhaps uh, you know, try again for one of those gritty, defensive, uh, dogged showings um, and hope that uh, uh, Mornay Stein, assuming that he does get uh, um, another vote of confidence at fly-off, which I suspect he is going to, um, uh, kicks every point that comes on offer mm -hmm. his way and that we win sort of uh, by, you know, eight penalties to two tries or something like that. Um, uh, but if, if the box were to play a sort of a, a, a more surprise, expansive type game, uh, then that would almost be a better sign, obviously, if, if South Africa could actually sort of uh, outwow the All Blacks. But it's, it, we seem so light years away from actually making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get any sense of a, a, a proper plan to develop our attacking play. Um, it just looks non-existent at the moment. I think uh, a little I bit saw of a headline this morning. Sorry, uh, Alistair Kitts here calling the expansive rugby a fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> He's right to an extent, you know. At, at test level, uh, uh, he, he is correct, especially for instance when the box think in terms of heading to Europe quite soon, um, and and you don't play sort of fancy rugby there in November, uh, trying to grind out test wins against the sort of home unions. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. But of course, there are also uh, plenty of occasions where the All Blacks simply expose the rest of the world for sort of yep. lack of attacking now uh, when conditions are nice and dry and firm and fast. Um, the All Blacks totally in a class of their own. I think that uh, however the box play on Saturday, New Zealand will still be too, too classy for them. Although, you know, South Africa at home, uh, hope springs eternal. There will be quite a passionate crowd, mm. some of whom will be supporting the All Blacks as well. But um, uh, it, it's not out of the question that South Africa can win because they will take uh, a bit of... I, I do agree with Alistair about taking some mental heart from, from what happened against Australia. As ugly as it was, they, this team, this young developing team, badly needed to win just to show that they can win. Yeah. Um, and uh, despite it being a, a reasonably wretched game all round, um, at least they did get that result. So uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there is scope for, for a possible Bokwin, but I'll tell you what, I, I wouldn't be staking any, uh, any money on it.